This is Popus, running the much-awaited Cosmic Desktop, a project which has been in development for almost two years. And finally, we have a public alpha. And this ISO right here is the first version of Popus running Cosmic Desktop, which is made available to the public for testing. And in this video, I will be covering all the features, let you know the shortcomings, things which are broken as of now, even my suggestions for improvements. Trust me, this video will be interesting. Okay, starting with the basics, there's the desktop. Now, this will look very familiar to those already in Popos because of the cosmic skin which is applied on top of Groom in the previous releases. And that's a good thing. As of now, you don't get any all application view and the only way to access is through the menu. The super key launches a search applet, very handy, and you can not just launch applets, but also search among open applications. This view looks exactly like the all tab view of Cosmic, although one annoying issue is it fails to detect which app I used last, and whenever you go for the all tab, it will consistently switch to the topmost app in the all tab list view. For other apps, you will have to navigate further using Alt Tab or use Ctrl plus 1, 2 or 3 along with the Alt Tab key combination. Super complex, super annoying. I hope they fix this first. Okay, weirdly, there is also no right click menu on the desktop. They should have added one, at least for changing the wallpaper. But if you keep all these things aside, you actually get an usual top bar with the necessities like power button, uh, notifications, network and sound. But what is interesting is this Windows icon or workspace, I don't really know, which lets you transform your desktop experience to a tiled one, which is one click. And not just that, you can also choose whether new workspaces will use the floating or tiling window configuration. And even it shows the shortcuts associated with tiling windows uh, or tiled windows to make you a true power user. And it is because of these subtle things, I feel like a desktop experience or a desktop environment actually holds the potential of becoming the new default for recommending to beginners in Linux. It is not just about familiar feel or trying to uh, mimic a popular operating system, but providing um, maybe an easier interface which the newcomers can fall in love with. And these are present almost everywhere. Right click on the window title bar and you will get the shortcuts for stacking windows together, maximizing the windows and also for the option to close the window. Although I would say this is kind of very heavily inspired by macOS, but anyway, there are other shortcuts too, which uh, show you how you can shift a window to a different workspace. So that is also available. The entire desktop experience is super seamless. There are subtle hints, which I really like. Maybe the icon that updates accordingly when you switch between floating or tiling windows. Love how the dock extends to form one large panel when you maximize the window. So it does not look weird. And it's not just this, but if you open the Cosmic settings page, you can change the default theme color to anything. Literally, this solves the issue of having a ton of accent colors, which if you remember cluttered Min's cinnamon desktop themes. You do get similar predefined accent colors here too, but the advantage doesn't stop there because you can change the background color of the themes according to your requirement. And look how amazingly Popos would just automatically adjust the foreground color. And even here, the foreground color, you get the text tinting, which actually saves the color and applies it to the text dynamically based on the background color. You only get to set the hue and Cosmic handles the saturation and values based on the background color you set. This enables you to set literally any color as the app background. Doesn't matter how light it is or how dark, it will just automatically adjust the foreground color so that everything remains visible enough. And it again doesn't stop here because there are other options for editing like active window color tint, changing container colors, editing button shapes, changing active window hint size, gaps around tiled windows, and even further changes available from experimental settings, which basically allow you to change the icon. I first thought this approach of having a side pop-up for changing colors to be a bit weird, but it makes sense when you make the app size smaller, which then utilizes that pop-up as a full window page, making them easier to interact with in smaller screens. And the final part, you can actually export this configuration to, or even import someone else's configuration. But you can also get most of these features uh, even on GNOME with Evolve. And there is also support for adaptive theming, so it can adjust GNOME theme colors 
according to the set wallpapers. And it's not just for GTK3, but also for GTK4, Gnome Shell, and even if you have any other system widgets installed, maybe Rofi Configs or Conkey, it also will change the colors according to the set wallpaper. Okay, then the wallpapers tab, which definitely has a lot of wallpapers shown in a grid view. Although the wallpapers are a bit um, compressed, so they don't have the correct width and height set. I really hate this thing. It's like those cheap designers creating most of the posters you see outside. This is not uh, that bad, but it definitely needs a little work and also some wallpapers need to be removed like this one. It looks quite odd. Okay, if you go back to desktop settings, there are customization options for everything like I covered appearance and wallpaper, but you can also configure the top panel, make it transparent, prevent it from extending to the entire desktop or the screen, which makes it adaptive like the dock and of course lets you set a size manually. You can configure the panel applets, add or remove them or even just reposition them. You don't get a store as of now, so it's just the system applets available, although third-party developers have the option to take advantage of this and create their own stuff. The same for the dock where you can do the usual stuff along with the applet section. Workspaces has a setting to show it in horizontal too. The default one is vertical. This is also available from the settings page. The only issue I have in the settings page is with the design. I feel like there's a bit too much of margin in the list view. There's a lot of space which is wasted and this leads to the weird flow of the description. Since there is no way to handle the overflow or some provision to reduce the margins and paddings when the window size is smaller. But the window is even smaller, then the margins on the sides reduce, whereas the paddings along with the top and the bottom margins remain the same. Which again does not look good. Okay, then we have the Displays tab, which allows for changing the resolution, refresh rate, and also has support for scaling. Power and battery, then input devices. You can change primary button, mouse speed, mouse acceleration, and more. And also there's the option for changing scrolling speed or to enable natural scrolling. Time in language, and then system and accounts. Some of the pages are not yet ready, so it's a work in progress. The software center takes a lot of time to load uh, the home screen for the first time and the lack of a progress indicator makes it look like an unfinished broken app. Other than that, the interface is very clean and lovely. App pages open up super fast and there is even support for choosing between flatpak or system apps. Although as of now, there is no option for viewing app ratings and you can only view the number of monthly downloads and that is all. Unofficially packaged apps are available unlike Mint, uh, which disables it by default. The rating feature feels like would be added later because it is not available for any app as of now. And I think they could have added the rating feature before the monthly downloads because it's a bit more useful. The files app is also pretty simple and I love how every app of the desktop follows one single design guideline. Keep files, settings and even softwares right beside each other and you will notice the consistent sidebars and more. The problem with padding and margins is however not just a settings app problem but also uh, as you can see it's in files app. But however they have managed the space quite well in the softwares app. I would like to see the same management in the other parts too in order to better the app experience. A lot of the apps are still from GNOME. There is document scanner, viewer, image viewer, system monitor and more. They are like a mix of GTK4 and GTK3 apps which do not follow the cosmic theme. So if you set the different background, foreground and the buttons, they are not followed. I'm guessing all of these would be replaced by their own apps from System76, making the user interface more consistent. And the last note I would like to mention is the lack of animation. There aren't much animations over here and everything happens just super fast. So it feels very snappy, but I think they could have added a little bit of animations in order to make things more interesting and better. As of now, there is little to no animation. So there's the maximize, minimize animation along with the panel and the top bar which changes and adapts automatically. That is there, but I'm hoping they will add more animations in the near future. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.